Happy New Year and welcome to Daily Bread. I'm so glad that you have joined me here on the first day of a new year. You know, as we start a new year, we always tend to look back on the first day and kind of see how God has led throughout the previous year. And as we head into 2021, 2020 is behind us. I know there's a lot of people out there that are just looking back on the previous year and they're just extremely thankful that is behind them. And then there's other people that are looking at the past year and say, how can God be in all of this? It's just a mess. And then there's the other people that look at the same thing and just wonder, does God even truly exist? Well, today on Daily Bread, we're going to take a look at how God works through a year like 2020. But before we begin, let's open with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you so much for your loving watch care over each one of us. And I pray that uh, as we begin a new year, that you will go with us and guide us through this year. And bless us now on Daily Bread as we open your word and study a little bit here today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I heard a story recently that was really fascinating. This, I'm not sure when it took place, but I think it's something that you will enjoy as well. The story is called Nuts from God, and it seems like a weird title, but there's an organization called Maranatha International, and Maranatha is a Seventh-day Adventist organization, and they largely build churches and schools in third world countries. Now, I know they don't all do just that. There are some stuff that they do here in the States, some projects. I know my dad, when he was the maintenance director at Upper Columbia Academy, at the end of the school year, he'd have a bunch of Maranatha volunteers come in and they'd help repair things, build some new things, update the school and all those types of things. So I know that they don't do just this. They do some other things as well. But they're really famous for the one day church. And the way that always worked is they have a plant in Minnesota where they build all of the materials for a one day church. And then it's put on a container ship and sent to the job site. And there it takes the volunteers and the people there helping one day to put the whole church up. And that's where it gets its name, One Day Church. Now they also do schools. And there was an area in Zimbabwe where they were going to build a school. Now school is going to take a lot more than one day to put up. And so I think they would said they were going to take two weeks to put this whole school together. And of course, there's lots more materials. And once again, in Minnesota, their plant there, they manufacture all of the materials and then send it to, in this case, Zimbabwe. And as the materials all arrived, the workers are sitting there inventorying everything that is there. They've got the sheet metal for the roofs. They've got this building material. They've got that building material. They've got the plexiglass. They have all of the bolts. And they, uh-oh, they're missing the nuts. They had all of the bolts that they needed, but there was no nuts to go on the bolts. You see, the plexiglass is what they used for the windows. And then they had a bolt. I don't know if it was like this one or not, that they put two nuts on to hold the, the windows in place. And they had 500 bolts. And so they needed a thousand nuts to go with those bolts. And they had no nuts. It was a dire situation because they couldn't finish the full project without it. Now, normally here in the States, you or I would say, well, let's just go down to Home Depot, get ourselves a thousand nuts and continue our project. It's fairly easy to do, but they're in a third world country. They didn't have Lowe's, they didn't have Home Depot, they didn't have any of these big hardware stores to go do that. I remember several years ago going on a mission trip to Belize. And my dad and I went into one of those hardware shops and all they had was a couple pieces of lumber here and some uh, plywood over here, a few tools here and there, and there really wasn't a whole lot there in the hardware store. A lot of what they had had to be pre-ordered and then you picked up later after it had been shipped in. So here they are in Zimbabwe trying to get a thousand nuts for their project. 
So they had a local. Well, one of the things that Maranatha always does is they have local people there helping with the project with those that come in and volunteer. And so they had a local gentleman by the name of Moses. And they sent Moses, they, they, they gave him the bolt. And they said, I want you to go to the little tiny mom and pop hardware store and I want you to get us a thousand nuts. Now, I don't know what Moses is thinking as he's going to the hardware store. It probably weighed heavy in his pocket because he knew the prospects of them getting that type of material was very, very slim. It was going to take a miracle of God to get what they needed. So he gets to the hardware store and he talks to the shop owner. And he tells him who, he's in, who he is. He's with the Adventist group, the Maranatha group, building the school. And the shopkeeper's like, yeah, I, he'd heard about them. He knew what they were doing. And he says, uh, they can't build that thing in two weeks. It's going to take a miracle of God to get that thing built in two weeks. And Moses said that they were going to try their very best to do just that, build it in two weeks. But he said, I need some help. And he showed him the bolt. And he said, I need a thousand nuts for this bolt. And the shopkeeper got irritated. He said, that's an American bolt. All I have around here is metric stuff. And, and he started going on about how metric was better than the standard, which the American used. And, and then he turned to his um, associates, his employees, and they were talking and trying to argue over that. And Moses is just sitting there and he says, um, excuse me, I know this is going to sound strange, but would you mind just going in the back and just looking to see if you have any nuts that fit this bolt? And the shop owner looked at him. He says, there's no way in the world that I have that type of material in the back room. But since you asked, I'll go look. So he went back a few minutes digging around in the back of the shop. And then he came out with a big box and he set it on the counter full of nuts. And he says, I have a story to tell you. 60 years ago, he said, there was a farmer that came in and wanted specific bolts, the same size bolts that you have right here, American bolts. He didn't know why he wanted them, but that's what he wanted. And so this guy talked to his American supplier and they said, yeah, we'll be happy to send you a thousand bolts, but you have to get the nuts with them. You can't just send the bolts. You got to have the nuts with them. So he talked to the farmer and the farmer said, fine. So he ordered them. And when they came in, the farmer came to pick up the bolts and the nuts. And he took all the nuts off. He says, I don't need them. You keep the, you keep the nuts. I don't need them. I just need the bolts. That's, that's all I need. And so the shop owner then took that box of nuts and put it on the back shelf 60 years earlier and forgot all about it. It was collecting dust and cobwebs. And now, 60 years later, a gentleman came in asking for the exact same size. So they took those nuts that they had, and they took the bolts, and they tied them together, and sure enough, they fit. And so Moses took back to that job site a thousand nuts that had been ordered. Now, that's, that to me is just an amazing story. It works. It's just amazing to me. God knew that they would have a nut problem 60 years before they had a nut problem. And he solved the problem 60 years before they even had the issue or the problem. Somehow he planted in this farmer's mind that he needed a specific size of bolt for his project that he was working on. And then he had the supplier say, no, the, the nuts have to come with the bolts. And then he gave the idea to the farmer to leave the nuts behind, and he gave the idea to the shop owner to leave the nuts on the shelf. So because of all of that, those people had the nuts that they needed to finish their project. And I can't remember from the story whether they finished their project on time, but eventually they got the school built and they had the nuts from God to do it. You know, 2020 has been quite a story, quite a mess as some people might say. 
You know, COVID-19 has sure, certainly wreaked havoc on our country and our world. Some people are getting sick, some people are dying, some people are losing their jobs, small businesses are going out of business. And then we have the political unrest. It's been a political season like no other this country has faced. And then we also have racial unrest that's been plaguing our country. So as we look at all of those things that have taken place in 2020, I know there's a lot of people that are glad that 2020 is behind us. But is 2021 going to be all that much better? Is God still here? Is God in charge? Is a question we might ask. Matthew chapter 28. After Jesus raises from the dead, he gives his disciples the great commission of go into all the world and preach the gospel. And then at the very end of Matthew 28, verse 20, in the last few lines of the book of Matthew, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So here Jesus is telling his disciples that he will be with them through the end of the age, which means that Jesus is with you and with me here today. He was with his disciples and he is with us today. Hebrews 13 verse number five says pretty much the exact same thing. But here we read, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Here, here the writer of Hebrews is telling us to be content with what we have because he, he being God, God or Jesus is with us and he will never leave us nor forsake us. He is with us you and me, even through all of the troubles and the heartache that we've pa had in this past year. And so verse number six, as we continue on in Hebrews 13, says, so we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Because we know that God is with us and will never leave us for, nor forsake us, we can say the Lord is our helper. I will not fear. And what can man do to us? We know that God is in charge. And with him in charge, we have nothing, absolutely nothing to fear. Uh, one of my favorite verses in all of scripture is Jeremiah 29 and verse number 11. And I'm sure you are familiar with this verse just as I am. And I always prefer the NIV version of this verse. And it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. God wants to give us a bright hope and a bright future. And sometimes that bright future isn't quite what we want it to be, but it is a bright future because we have an eternal home waiting for us. And then Isaiah 41, verse number 10. I, this is another one of my favorite verses found in the Bible. Verse 10 of Isaiah 41 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God wants a good future for you and for me. And he says he will hold us up with his righteous right hand. So 2020, maybe you've been dealt a bad hand through 2020 and you're not sure how God is going to bless in 2021. You're not sure if God is there. Well, I'm here to tell you based on scripture that God is there. God is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And he has good plans for you and for me. And I know it's tough sometimes to put our hope and our strength in him. But know this, that God said he will give us good future. I want to hold on to that promise and I hope you do too. As we head into 2021, Let's let God do the driving in our lives because he has a good plan and a good future for you 
and for me. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you so much for how you have led in 2020. It's hard to say sometimes based on all of the things that we went through, but we know that you are still in charge. And so Lord, I pray that you will bless us as we head into the new year. And Lord, we just pray that your, your plans, your will will be for our lives. And we just wanna put our lives in your hands. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen.